Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're doing well. In this video, you're gonna learn how to run a Java program on a website. So if you've ever made a Java program and you're like, hey, I wanna share this with someone, you can do that really easy. But first, my name's Alex. On this channel, I post a Java tutorial just like this one every single week. So if you're new here and you might wanna see that, then consider subscribing. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace helped me build the all new alexlaurenlee.com. Go there now for my tips, practice programs, and a demo of what we're gonna be doing today. You can also donate to the channel there if you want. Squarespace is the all-in-one shop to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Launch your passion project with Squarespace. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order with offer code Alex Lee. So I'm going to show you what you're going to build with me today in this video. I'm just going to hop over to my website, alexlaurenlee.com. And on here, you'll see this beautiful website that I made with Squarespace. But here at the bottom, I've added this special Java code. This is a Java program that's embedded onto a web page. This program is a fart generator, which I made in a video about two weeks ago. It prompts the user to discover what fart they are. We enter the first letter of our name and the day of the month we were born. So the example here is actually mine. So if I enter A18 and then run, it compiles a Java program. And then once it's done, it gives us the name of the fart we are. In this case, I'm a wretched fat fart. And we get the number of runs left. To compile Java code through a website, we're going to use a URL to send Java code and the input parameters to this URL. And the free version of that URL gives you 200 requests per day. So in this case, uh, 15 people have put in requests already. So we just see that we have 185 runs left. There will be some limitations with the free trial version, but you'll be able to do everything in this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up our Squarespace website. So click that first link in the top of the description and you'll be sent to squarespace.com slash Alex Lee. This will give you 10% off your first purchase if you want to keep the project for more than the trial period, but we'll just ignore that for now. We're going to make a Squarespace account, so just click Get Started. Here it's going to give you some beautifully designed templates. They have some for portfolios, photography, and actually my website uses Paloma. But in this example, we're going to do a simple one, so go down to Launch Pages, and then we're going to use one called Essex. So click Start with Essex. Now what this does is it generates this URL and this is your special trial URL. You should also have gotten an email. In this case, it went to my alexlaurenlee at gmail email. So we can start our 14 day trial. It didn't show me create an account because I think it auto logged me in. So you will have to enter your own email. And this is our site if we ever wanna to go to it. So I'm just gonna hop back over here. Now, now we're just gonna follow the setup steps for Squarespace. So in this case, we're making a Java program to generate farts. So I'm going to call it the fart generator. But at the end, I'm gonna show you how you can customize this to make it to your own Java program. So we'll do fart generator for now. It gives us a little tutorial, but I'll sort of walk you through what to do. This shows us how to create new pages on our website, how to style pages. For now, we're just gonna click explore on your own. It's not showing up very well, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. It's gonna close this here. So this is the auto-generated website from that template. And you see we have the fart generator title at the top. But for now, we're gonna get rid of some of this and just make it a very simple, basic Java site, like how I showed you. So click Edit. And then here are each of the different sections. We're gonna delete this section here at the bottom, so just click this red trash can. Remove. Now all that's left is this middle section. We're going to delete these as well. Now all that's left is this little text field. If you hover over the top or the bottom, it'll show what we can add. So if you click it, we can see all these things that we can add. We can add like collage, image, video, but we're interested in this code block. So click code. And now this is where we're going to insert custom HTML and JavaScript. Here we see some default HTML that says hello world inside of P tags, which are the paragraph tags in HTML. So now what we see on the screen is hello world because of this. If this was changed to just hello with an exclamation mark and we hit apply, it would change to hello. But in here, we're gonna import some custom code that I wrote for you to help us set up that Java project. So go to the GitHub link in the description. This will bring you to the Java website code.html, which I have made for you. Now you just have to copy everything in here all the way down to the ending script tag. Should be about 85 lines. Copy, delete this, and paste it in here. Then click apply. 
So now we have code for the fart generator, and I'll sort of explain what's going on here. So first we start off with this p tag, and this is just like the hello world p tag. This is a tag in HTML. HTML helps you build websites that just displays text on the screen. If this was just in a regular HTML document and not inside the Squarespace generator, it would still display this on the screen. Next we have an input tag, which is this input text field here. Next we have a paragraph tag that's set to nothing right now, which will be generated with the amount of runs from the URL we're going to call to compile Java. Next, we have a form tag. That's this run button. We have a form and then a button inside. This helps with the code I wrote later on in JavaScript. Then we have a code tag, which will display our output from the Java program, format it a little nicer for us, rather than just the p tag. Next in here, we see a script tag. And this is all the custom JavaScript I wrote for you to help run your Java program. So everything in here is JavaScript, not Java. But trust me, I'll get there in a second. So what happens here is I get the element by the ID run, which is this button. So when we click the, bu the run button, I've tied a function to it. So when you click run, the code inside of here will run. Next, what I do is I get data from the input here and store that into a variable called standard in. We do some setup for the URL we're going to call. We're going through a little network policy here with this URL. And then we're using the online compiler called jdoodle, passing the standard input and our Java program with a special client ID and client secret. We get a response back from that URL and we set the text of the code block. So I know it's a lot, you don't have to understand everything right now, but basically there are three things we need to change here. We need to change the client ID to your specific client ID for jdoodle. You need to change the client secret to your jdoodle client secret. And then you need to change the Java code inside. We're literally going to take an entire Java program and put it inside of these double quotes. Not the best way, but sometimes working is better than trying to have something perfect and then it ending up not working at all. So if we click apply, click done and save, if we try to enter A18 again in here and click run, it'll show loading from the JavaScript, but we'll see this weird not a number symbol and then it won't ever get the response. That's because those three items weren't taken care of in the code. And that comes from setting up jdoodle. So now what you're gonna do is go to the jdoodle link in the description. You'll be brought to the jdoodle compiler API. You may have heard the word API used a lot. API means application programming interface. Basically it's code that companies and other people write to make your life easier. So in this case, this jdoodle compiler API is a URL that we can send Java code to that will compile it and then bring that text response back to us all over the network. So what you'll see here is a bunch of different plans. We're gonna use the free plan, which has 200 credits per day. Now you might be saying, well, what happens after the 200th run? For the free version, it won't work anymore. So we're gonna keep track of those 200 runs, which I've already done for you in JavaScript. So click choose. Then you're gonna have to sign up with an email ID and password. If you're new, we're just gonna click register. Enter an email that you like. Choose a display name. Enter your password. Enter it again. Click I'm not a robot. And then do J, join jdoodle. Now go over to your email. You'll see your registration. Click the registration link. And now we've verified successfully with jdoodle. Click close. Now go under the API section and click go to API. Click choose again. Since we're logged in, we can go to the next step. Click free and then hit subscribe. You can click documentation if you want and take a look through it, but I'll show you the basics. So what you wanna do now is go to credentials. This has your client ID and your client secret. Copy your client secret, go to your Squarespace, go back and edit this code block, scroll down and replace this your client ID with the client ID you copied. Next, go back, copy your client secret, replace your client secret. Now you should be set up with that jdoodle account that will compile your Java code. Next, we need to put our Java code inside of these quotes. I have a Java program here called the fart generator. 
All this code will be in the second GitHub link, but if you wanna check out how I made it and a little tutorial on it, you can check out the video on the screen now. If we run this, we'll see how it works. It prompts the user for the day and name they're born, day and first name, and it works like expected here. For our program, we're not gonna to need to print anything out to the console. We're just gonna get standard input from that input text field. This console window acts as an input field. So when we do scanner, scan.next, scan.next int, it scans this input in the console. But when we use that same scanner code with jdoodle, it takes the standard input from that text box. So it'll act the same way. We're gonna do one simple modification and just remove this print statement since we don't need it. But the scanner, will still work with that input text field. This is one limitation of using Java programs. The only way I was able to figure it out is using just a standard input box in HTML like this, where users can em enter important information to interact with the Java program. And again, I'll show you how to customize the Java program for you. So now copy the entire Java project. If you have um, package something at the top, don't include, pa don't include package. Just copy everything from the import statements all the way down to the bottom. Next, we want to paste that into here, except this is a string. It's inside of double quotes. So we need to escape the characters that aren't going to work inside of double quotes. So next, go to the next link. This will do exactly that and make it so we can paste our Java program into double quotes. So paste the program in here, then click escape. This will escape those characters down here and you can see it looks a little different but this will make it work so now you want to copy this whole thing and paste that into the your formatted java code now if we click apply click done and save we should have a fully working java program so now if we enter a18 when i click run it'll take this input along with the java code the client id and the client secret to that jdoodle API URL. We'll get a response back and we'll replace this code block down here with the output. So run, we see the number of runs left and we see the output of the program. If I change this to say K10, it sends the request again and we see a gigantic senile fart. Now what we can do to sort of check this out is if you right click and click inspect on Google Chrome. It should be something similar on other web browsers. If you click the network tab and then run this again, you'll see these, sorry, it's kind of hard to see. I can zoom out. You'll see what's called a request. And if you click on the execute one, what happens is in this little window. So if you click the first execute, then you'll see this URL that I constructed in JavaScript, Cores Anywhere, Heroku app, API JDoodle. If you go down, you can see the body that we posted. So we have our client ID, our client secret, the script that we added, which is our Java program, the language, Java, and we see the response is what's called JSON. It's like formatted text. We see output, and then basically I just take this and paste it in HTML. Now what you can do is go to that URL on your phone. So in this case, mine is silver kazoo 2 w 6 e.squarespace.com. And if we do it now, it shows that it's private. So what you can do is go into settings, click site availability, and then for the trial, you can do either private or password protected. So you can still share this with friends. So I'm just gonna make my password Alex. Click save. Now, if I refresh this, I'll get asked to put in a password. So I'm just gonna type Alex. And now we get that Java program being run on mobile devices as well. So I'm gonna enter another one, T31. Click run and it works exactly the same on mobile. Sometimes it might take a little while, but eventually it works the same on mobile. So that is really cool. If you upgrade, you can make it public to anyone on the internet and you can even customize the domain. 
So if you have a really cool Java program you wanna share with the world, you can do that. Now, since we got all this working, I wanna show you how you can customize this to make it your own Java program. But first, I'd like to take a quick break to tell you about my experience with Squarespace. It's really great. It's the best I've ever used. I've created websites using HTML by scratch. I've made websites with other builders, but this has been the best by far. It's so easy. I got great support. The template I used had basically everything and I got my website up in just a few hours, all of this. I was really into graphic design and I wanted to be like a web designer. And man, what they are doing here is just really, really great. I was able to set up donations, have downloadable links and everything I need to make my website personal to me. If you're working on your personal brand as a young professional or you wanna launch an app or host a program like this, I really recommend Squarespace, guys. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Alex Lee to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'm just gonna make a new class for us. We'll say like custom Java project and add a main method in there. So basically, the way I got this to work was through the input field on that text box. So we're gonna have to use a scanner to get input from the user and then customize our project that way. So the key point you need to do this is get standard input from a user. Say we wanna take five numbers, for example. To put this on the website we just made, just make a scanner object, scanner scan, type system.in, import the scanner, set up the variables we want. So we wanna have um, a is scan.next int, and we'll do that for b, c, d, and e. You can change this for whatever kind of variable you want. If it's a string, you can do scan.next. If it's a double, you can do scan.next double. And then for this simple example, we could just print out A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Save this, copy everything from the import. Remember if there's package at the top, don't include package. Copy your program with the inputs from that text box that you want. Go back to the online converter, paste in your new code, click escape, copy the escaped string, click edit in Squarespace, edit the code block, replace all that Java code, click apply. And actually we wanna edit the, the message here to be our new program. So this will add five numbers by entering five integers separated by a space. Put your little example, like four, five, two, one, three. Hit apply. We can edit our site header to the new add five numbers program. Click done and save. Now we can enter our new program number. So we'll do like 44490, run. And this will run that custom Java program that we just added. The answer is 21 and we keep track of the runs. If we refresh on our mobile device, we'll see the new updated program and it'll work the same on here. This will be good for 14 days and it's password protected or private, but again, you can upgrade and get a full version and get 10% off with code Alex Lee if you want. This is a really great way to show off your passion project and just share it with your friends. But this is a seriously good example of some real interactive programming. If you wanna customize it further, you can design the site. Just look up some Squarespace tutorials. It's really easy. You can easily change background pictures, change headers, use custom designs, and really make an awesome website based around your Java project. And I would love for you guys to show me the projects that you make using this. Let me know if you enjoyed projects like this. I know it's a little out of the ordinary, but I thought it was pretty cool. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of your day.